Okay, cool. Now we have looked at all these uh, measures, we will visit another important concept, which is uh, a different way of looking at, central, at centrality, and this is based on closeness. Okay, yes? Uh, if a node has uh, many hub like neighbors, yes? uh, how does it affect its uh, eigencentral location? Okay, so if you have a node, let's look at this question. So this is a good question. If you have a node with many hub neighbors, okay, we know that the page rank centrality, it will not really, um, it will kind of dump that down, okay? But it depends on how many. So this is, you know, a very relative question. But if we say maybe relatively the same number, okay, then the centrality by page rank will be lower than the centrality by the Agen, um by the eigenvector centrality because the eigenvector centrality it actually looks at how central and how uh, important your neighbors are so if all of them are hubs it's going to give you a very high score okay as opposed to page centrality it doesn't it looks at the um, at the structure or topology of your neighbors and tell you know if you have like some hubs it kind of you know tries to not take them all into account so it dumps them down it like kind of uh, decrease their effect okay so page centrality should be lower in that case okay great so here this is another way of defining centrality and these are actually you can look at we 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 can define the importance of you know nodes using different measures or ways of thinking or articulating the problem so here two nodes we are maximally close we got if in, the, in the topological sense, if they share a direct connection between them. So these two nodes, J and K, they're, they're very close, right? So what is the definition of a topological distance between nodes or the length of, you know, the path that connects these two nodes? It's actually the length of the shortest path in the graph G between I and J. For example, one simple way to define this is to count the number of edges in an unweighted, undirected graph. For example, the uh, shortest distance between i and j, so this is a very simple graph, is 1, right, because we have only one edge. And then between i and k, it's we have two connections. We need This is the actually the shortest path. And you guys need to keep in mind that we're looking for, not for any path, but for the shortest. So this is very important, OK? So in this case, we have 2, right? So, and then uh, if we have another, let's say, let's say we have this path towards this uh, node. Still, the shortest path, actually the topological distance between node i and k, it's equal to 2 because this path is longer. So that's not the, the shortest path, the, the, the topological distance between these two nodes. Okay? So here, the shortest path is also called the geodesic distance. And let's look at this graph. What is the shortest, shortest path or the length of between nodes 1 and 2? So we have 1 and, uh, sorry, 1 and 6. So this is 1. 1 and 14. What is the shortest, uh, the length of the shortest path? Yeah, 4. And then 1, 3. 1 and 3, it should be. Two, right? So a node basically with short average path length is able to interact with many, you know, graph elements via only a few links. So this is why we call it topologically central, which means, you know, just via shortest path, you can reach out to all these nodes in the graph. So even with these short, short, you know, like short number or like a few number of links, you can just jump right away to 14. And Centrality here means like we found a node that can easily enable us to go from this one, this node to another node through the shortest uh, uh, through the shortest path. This is why it's called closeness. Okay, great. So um, for example, we have like if we have messages or information flow emanating from such a central node. It will, this information will spread to all other nodes in a relatively short period of time. So if your network, if your data depends on time, time is a very important component, 
then using closeness centrality might be a very good measure to select. So this is, you know, very relative. So it depends on the data and it depends on the problem. So in the other way around, so if signals, so it's like conversely, so we have if signals originating from other non-central nodes, they will only take a short time to, to reach the central node. So it goes both ways, right? So any information from other nodes quickly reaches that node and any information that passes through that node, it quickly reaches out to all other nodes, okay? This is what it means that this node is close to all uh, other nodes in the network. It's, you know, uh, topologically, centrally clo uh, close to all other nodes. So what is the definition? How we define this, formalize it? So basically, this was first articulated by Bavla also in 1950s and uh, formulated mathematically by Beauchamp in 19. Uh, 65, and this is a definition. So a closeness centrality of a node is defined as the inverse of its average shortest path length to all other nodes. So it's quite a simple definition, okay? So this is the number of nodes. We re remove that node, okay, node i, and then we divide it by its shortest uh, path length to all other nodes, the sum. Now let's look at uh, you know this. So basically, you guys need to keep in mind that when we say when we say sorry, the shortest path, it means the topological distance, and it's this is completely different from the physical proximity that we have in the Euclidean space. So, for example, if we have a directed graph, how do we define the closeness centrality of this graph? So in this case, uh, if we take in the n closeness centrality, we need to consider the shortest path that are incoming to node i, okay? And uh, in the other way around, so we can do the uh, closeness, the out closeness centrality and the in closeness centrality, depending whether we're considering paths that go from um, i towards all other nodes j's or like incoming nodes basically to node i, okay? Now let's compute the centrality the incentrality of V1. I will give you guys, you know, uh, just one, two minutes to do this. So I would like you to write this down on your uh, piece of paper and I will just put in here the formula, okay? So how do we compute this? Okay, so it's quite simple, right? So we need to compute the length, the shortest length. And you need to keep in mind that this is n, right? So we have 4 divided by... So when we say L, uh, 1, 2, okay, it means the shortest path that are incoming to node um, i. It means we're going from 2 to 1. So do we have, a, a like, what is the shortest distance that gets us from node 2 to 1? What is the shortest distance? Let's find it. So the shortest distance is this one. Uh, we go from 3 and then, so it's 2, right? So this is quite easy. So this is 2 plus L1 to 3. So we go from 3 to 1, 1, yes, 4 to 1. 2, yes, so this is the path, and then 5 to 1, 3, very good, that's it, so you guys got it, so it's basically 4 divided by 8, okay? What if we do not have a way, for example, from 1 to 4, we do not have a way, but how can we define very this? Very good question. That it's infinite or? Infinite? It's infinite. So then all of the other nodes have zero central in this case. Yes, which you can see that there are like, you know, yeah, in that case, yes. Okay, good. So now let's look at weighted graphs, for example. So the closeness centrality 
can also be estimated on um, basically uh, weighted graphs and it's by computing the shortest path. So in this case, the shortest path will depend on the weights on the edges, right? So for now, we're just counting the number of connections, but here we need to take into account these numbers, right? So for example, let's look at this example. So the closest centrality of node V2, so we have six nodes, uh, sorry, seven nodes, so six divided by, you know, the shortest path that goes from all other nodes to V2, and here, if we sum them up, so I, you guys can do the math, it's quite simple. Uh, you can find this number, okay? So 6 divided by 16. And as for the node V1, okay, we find also 6 divided by 16. But what do you guys know this? That when we compare these two nodes, right? Oops. So when we compare these two nodes, they have different properties, right? So these ones have like thicker connections. So these numbers, the five here, the weights might be more important than the number of connections you have, right? So this is something to keep in mind. So node two basically has many low weight edges and the node, node V1, it has a few uh, high weight edges. So it is a problem. So this is like something we need to think about. So this causes ambiguity. So here in this case, we don't know which one is important, right? Although each of these nodes have a different topological structure, this one is connected to three nodes, right, with low weights. This is, is only connected to two nodes with very high weights. Which one is central? Which one is important? They have exactly the same closing centrality, okay? Now, to solve this, uh, this is something you guys can think about. There are different solutions to this problem. But something to think about, so you can think about the number of edges, how to possibly solve this problem. So you can consider what we call the hop count, and this does integrate or emphasizes the contribution of the number of edges uh, that each node has, not only the weight. So you can see, we always need to scale using two different sources of information, sometimes degree of a node. Other time, you know, degree of a node and degree of the neighbors of a node. Here it's like, you know, the uh, weights that the node has, but also its degree. So maybe by combining these different orthogonal measures, different, you know, types of measures, we can come with better centralities that will enable us to solve this ambiguity for this graph, okay? So, right, so if you want to uh, check the solution, feel free to look at the box 5.3 in, um, uh, in, in, in the textbook that we're using, uh, Fundamentals of Brain uh, Network, and also look at this paper. So you'll find all of those links also below the video.